It started with a war. I walk the Dinan Shiral. There is only death on this journey. It is my fight. Even if it means this world must die. Hello Thedosians and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at why Solus might die in the next Dragon Age. And Solavellans, prepare your hearts because this video will be rough. Of course, for those who are new here, this contains many spoilers of comics, of the books, and all the games of Dragon Age. Plan A Solus woke up too weak from his slumber to activate the orb. He tells you in Trespasser that his agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. Solus claims that if he had found the orb and claimed it, he would have used the anchor we bore to dismantle the veil. And once the veil was torn, the waking world and the Fade would be in chaos. He would then declare that he would restore the world of his own time, the world of the Elves in Arlathon. It was not supposed to happen this way. No matter what comes, I want you to know that what we had was real. Let's be honest. In Inquisition, Solus dislikes the fact that you, the Herald, have the Anchor. The Anchor was Solus's key to restoring back his world. The Anchor was his power, his orb, and his plan. We arrived at an inconvenient time during the Conclave, and as a result, we now have the power that Solus intended to use to break the Veil. You should not have given your orb to Corypheus, Red Wolf. So the breach and the rifts were never supposed to happen. Us being at the Conclave was never supposed to happen. Some fans believe he's envious of you throughout the whole entirety of the game because he doesn't like the fact that you have his key of the Veil. It all clicks when Solus constantly asks you questions about the Anchor, how you feel, and if you've changed in any way. Because he wants that Anchor. And that was his only hope to plan an attack for the Evaneris. However, we are in the way. In Soul of Helens, brace yourself, he even went as far as using us, luring us to Skyhold, and hoping that we would recover the orb safely from Corypheus. And as we all know, the orb breaks as a byproduct from Corypheus's fight. Solus appears distressed as a result of the broken pieces. He's now putting together a plan B for what must happen next. Plan B. We know that Solus quickly leaves the Inquisition after the orb breaks. Liliana even states that her agents look to and fro with no traces of where Solus went. From what we know, Solus must have used an alluvian to find Flemeth, and it seems that Flemeth knows what Solus has to do in order to rise as the Dread Wolf. This is where we need to look very closely in this epilogue scene. Something is telling us that whatever happens next, this is not going to be easy. Solus looks so distressed about the future he now walks into. He now walks the Danan Sheral. The failure was mine. I should pay the price. But the people... They need me. I am so sorry. So what is Solus's plan B? There are a couple of theories, the first of which will be based on what the Bioware writers have said. Around early 2020, there was a tweet speculating that the Dragon Age games are very similar to the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament from the Bible. Patrick Weeks, one of the current Dragon Age writers, tweeted, I'm okay with that not having happened because trying to explain what we're working on Dragon Age numbers would be confusing. 
This was a response to when the developers for Dragon Age 2 were going to originally name it Dragon Age Exodus. Because of this, the developers were tweeting that the games are linked to those types of themes from the Torah, meaning that we can draw clues on how Solus will play out in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. So Patrick Weeks teases that Dragon Age Dreadwolf is like Numbers. So what is the Book of Numbers and how does it relate to Solus's plan? The Book of Numbers was originally titled In the Wilderness after the events of Exodus and Leviticus, in which Moses leads the Israelites out of slavery with Egypt and into the wilderness for 40 years with the Lord. The Book of Numbers contains the numbers of the Israelites' complaints about their journey to the Promised Land. And because they complained a lot, many disobeyed God and those who disobeyed were killed or cursed with plagues. The image of Solus is said to be very similar to that of Moses. Moses, who grew up in Egypt's palaces, discovers he is not Egyptian, and the Lord uses him to lead his true people, the Israelites, to the Promised Land. Solus is just like this as well. Being called the infamous fen Harel, the rebel god, he removed the Valesleen from the slaves and led them to a place of safety according to the ancient mosaics from Trespasser. He could walk among both clans of gods without fear, and both believed he was one of them. And Fenharel was also known to be a god who could boldly walk in front of the Evaneris and the Forgotten Ones. So just like Moses, who was a voice of reason between the Israelites and the Egyptians, and like in Dragon Age, we are now at a time where Solus's plan will end up being a sacrificial task for the good of the elven people, just like Moses did with the Israelites in Numbers. Moses began to get angry with God and disobeyed him while the Israelites were complaining about water. Because the Lord instructed Moses to strike the rock once, Moses disobeyed and struck it twice. Because of this disobedience, Moses did not get to see the promised land. So what systems would Solus need to do that would cause him not entering the promised land of Thetis? Blight. There are only two blights left in the Dragon Age story, according to Thetis' history. As a result, it is known that something worse can happen after the blights, something that no one would expect. It's possible that Solus' plan for elven restoration will result in another blight, or possibly two blights at once. Dragon Age fans believe that the two remaining half-circles in the mural from the trailer represent two blights, with the Red Lyrium Idol in the center. Solus also wants and needs this Red Lyrium Idol throughout Tevinter Nights in the comic Night Errant. In the Dreadwolf Take You short story, the Dreadwolf claims the idol as his. You use my idol carelessly to vandalize the Sea of Dreams. Now feel the pain of what you have created. We know throughout Dragon Age 2 that the Red Lyrium Idol is a super dangerous item to mess with. Using the idol for his plans will likely lead him to the Road of Death. For what we know about Red Lyrium, Red Lyrium sucks the life out of the source using it. And like we saw with Meredith, those who absorb the idol's power, they likely never survive. Besides using the idol, Solus will most likely become blighted in this process, very much similar to even becoming an intelligent darkspawn like Corypheus and the Architect. Black City Seven magisters, each a high priest of one of the old gods from Tevinter, they used blood magic to open a gate into the Golden City and physically enter it in negative 395 ancient. The city then went black as soon as they arrived, and the mages were cast back into Thetis as the first darkspawn, triggering the first blight. Perhaps Solus and his knowledge knows how to enter the black city and will do any means necessary to get there to achieve his plan. It even states in the lore of Thetis that spirits and demons do not seek the black city for fear that they might get tainted as well. 
In the short story Half Up Front from Tevinter Nights, the character Vadis is hired by an unknown elf to steal Dumat's Folly, which is stated to be an artifact from the Black City. The unknown elf reveals that they are collaborating with the Dread Wolf. So whether Solus truly needed this artifact or not, it appears to be a pattern that Solus will now use the Blight and severely tainted items to carry out his plan for destroying the Veil. And as a result, using these types of magic does not allow anyone to survive, demonstrating that Solus's plan is a perilous journey. Conclusion I believe it is safe to say that Solus, whether we believe it or not, will use dangerous and lethal magical power to restore the elven people. However, because Solus may be tainted, he will be unable to see the promised land he creates because he is blighted and will not want to taint the restored land. I'd like to add that Solus is also waging two forces that want him dead and buried now, the Evaneris and the Forgotten Ones. So, if Solus does indeed have a plan to restore the elven people, I'm sure the war-hungry gods aren't delighted with Fen'Harel's schemes anymore. Moving on, as the writers projected, Dragon Age Dreadwolf will be close to the concept of the Book of Numbers. It is noted, since we don't know his true past, Solus could well have disobeyed Mithal and how the orb was to be used. And as a result, Solus will now have to use tainted magic to destroy the veil, leaving him behind and giving up his life for the sake of the elven race. I believe we always knew there was a chance that Solus is the type to sacrifice himself. And as we saw in the Nightmare Realm, his greatest fear is that he will have to die alone. However, I believe that many fans of Dragon Age, including myself, will do everything possible to prevent this from happening. We will save our friend from himself if we can. Thank you for watching, and if this is your first time here, welcome! Please like and subscribe for more Bioware content like this. Also, I want to know your thoughts on Souls in the comments section below. I'm also doing an appreciation for small businesses who do Bioware related content in my videos now, and the first creator we have today is Elizabeth's Candle Creations. Elizabeth makes Dragon Age and Mass Effect inspired candles. I bought a Fen'Harel candle and look how nice it is, and of course, the candle smells wonderful. If you want to support Elizabeth, there's a link in the description below to check out her Instagram and website I definitely recommend. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.